Is that? Okay. Good afternoon. Um, we've been asked by many of you to uh, have a response to the events of the last uh, day. And obviously this has been a very difficult time for America in general and the law enforcement uh, profession in particular. Um, we recognize as sworn officers of the law that fairly or unfairly we are judged by every piece of officer conduct across the country. Ironically, despite the fact that there are 18,000 different police departments with different standards and different reporting mechanisms and different levels of training, we in Milwaukee find ourselves called upon the, to answer for the conduct of any officer anywhere in America. At the same time, we are also part of a profession that very specifically has its members place their lives at risk on behalf of other people. And if yesterday in Dallas proved anything, it proved that police officers were willing to die to defend the right of people to express a message that was negative about their own profession. The police officers of this country generally understand their obligations to the community and are the last ones in the world to see a dichotomy between the notion of black lives mattering and support for law enforcement. Because without any hyperbole, police officers in America's city care more about black lives than any other institution. Because the police officers of America's cities are the only ones dying to protect black lives. And that's a part of the community conversation that gets lost. We recognize that African Americans are overrepresented among victims of violent encounters with the police compared to their census population in the country. But if you drill down into the statistics of any urban center in America, the greatest disparity in the criminal justice system is African-American victims of violence, generally. Black lives matter all the time. They are matter when they are murdered by gang members. They matter when they are murdered by robbers. They matter when they are murdered by carjackers. They matter when police officers lay their lives down in defense of them. And it's about time the general so-called conversation about police conduct and its relationships of, with disadvantaged communities takes into account the broader perspective of what takes place every day in this country in the urban centers of America. Now, policing as an institution doesn't pretend to be perfect. But every police department needs to be judged on its own merits. The police officers in Milwaukee should not be judged by what someone did in another jurisdiction. We stand ready to be judged by the standards of our own training, our own selection criteria, our own highly limited use of deadly force among the lowest rates in the country, as well as the remarkable examples time after time when police officers in this city are justified in the use of deadly force, but do not use it. Now, I know conflict sells newspapers and conflict drives ratings, but we don't need to feed into the conflict narrative given the day-to-day -day reality of this city and any other city. Last year, 146 Milwaukeeans lost their lives to homicidal violence and 80% of them were African-American. Last year, African-Americans were overrepresented in the aggravated assault statistics. Over the last several years, African-Americans are 15 times more likely to be shot than anyone else in this city. And there's one institution willing to confront the gunfire seize the weapons, make the arrests, and risk insult on their behalf. 
And that's the members of the Milwaukee Police Department, and the members of police departments in every other major city in America. So let us mourn. Let us mourn the victims of homicidal violence. Let us mourn the victims of inappropriate police shootings. Let us mourn the police victims of violence suffered in order to protect the lives of others. But let us recognize this is all part of one tapestry of a discussion, not a single discussion that singles out one group of people as the fall guys for all the evils of society. The last 48 hours have been a stark reminder of our profession's responsibility to do better, but also our profession's willingness to risk the lives of its members on behalf of others. Now, if you've got any questions that can be useful based on our local perspective, I'll be happy to answer them after the mayor makes a few remarks. Mayor? Thank you, Chief. Today, like every day, police officers in the city of Milwaukee went to work. They went to work to put their lives on the line to protect the citizens of this community. It happens in Milwaukee every day. It happens in every community in the state. It happens every community in this nation. And there can be no equivocation. There can be no excuses. There can be no rationale. These officers in Dallas were assassinated. And every American, every American has to condemn this violence. We as a nation have to have a serious discussion about many of the issues that the chief referred to. We have to have a serious discussion about who we are as a nation, about gun violence, about how we treat each other. Because we are in this together. We are a nation, and we cannot be a nation that is divided. I go to many events in this community, and when I'm at those events, I tell people what this community needs. What I want is mayor. I want this to be a community where the people in this city can work with and respect our police officers. I also need this to be a city where our police officers can work with and respect our citizens. It is a two-way street. And this nation is weaker if we cannot come to grips with the notion that there are problems. And we as a nation have to face up to the problems that we face right now when it comes to the relationships between our community and the police. But again, I want to state so that there is no confusion. There is no, no reason on earth for what happened last night to happen. There is no explanation, there is no rationale, and we as a society cannot allow that to happen. Are there issues? There are serious issues when it comes to community police relations. We saw that in the other communities that were affected this week. But there is no reason for a police officer in Dallas to lose his life because of what happened in another state. There is no reason whatsoever. So let as, let's, us as a nation start having a serious, serious, serious conversation about what we are fostering because of the gun violence that we're seeing. And we've seen it this week in Louisiana. We've seen it in Minnesota. We saw it two weeks ago in Florida. Obviously, we saw it last night, tragically, the worst assault on police officers in this nation since September 11th. And we need to thank our police officers, and we need to thank those who put their lives on the line every single day. Thank you.